All right. Hey, and once again, thank you for joining us. I am your host, Brother Medina, here with the Inglewood Enterprise Gallery's Shirai Show. And I have joining us today is my co-host uh, for the day, my good friend Carly, the Structure Constructor. How you doing today, Carly? Good. Thank all right. You. All right. Thank you for joining us. Carly is one of our uh, guest hosts as well as the Chief Astrologer and the Metaphysic Consultant for the Inglewood Enterprise Gallery. It's always a pleasure having her on. Hope everybody is well. Are you well today, Carly? Doing so good. Thanks. Cool, cool, cool. I can't wait. This should be an interesting discussion today. Once again, we are the Inglewood Enterprise Gallery, located at our new location, 1200 West 35th Street, our new headquarters, which is actually at the Bridgeport Arts Center. And you can always check out our website, at www.inglewoodenterprisegallery.com that's inglewoodenterprisegallery.com and it's such a pleasure to be back on this great show. We have uh, a few more weeks left in the season up until the end of December for the Inglewood Enterprise Gallery Show, and we've had such an exciting season. Um, Carly has joined us once before, giving some of her astrological consultation and valuable information about the stars and the planetary alignment. Did I say that right? That's exactly correct. Okay, cool. I'm practicing. I'm practicing. <laughs> and she did such an awesome job we just had to have her back it was so much astrological information being discussed that we just had to come back for more so I'm glad you could join us today Carly I'm so happy to be all here. right all right and this time you actually brought a chart today huh I did okay okay so without further ado you know I like to get a little wordy and whatnot every now and again but since Carly has brought so much valuable and helpful information and a couple of props for us to take a look at I'm gonna get right into it and we will pull this chart up so we can actually see what we have here. All right. So before I pull this up, what is this called, Carly? So this is just a chart wheel. A chart wheel. Chart wheel. So this is basically what where all the signs belong in their proper place with their ruling planet on the outside. So okay. we can give a little lesson if we'd like to. Wow, okay. So did you make this? I made this. I like this. This is very nice. Thanks. I did, did you write this by hand, these numbers? I did. That is very neat handwriting. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know the stuff like neat handwriting. I'm kind of weird like that. I used like to that. have to practice, actually. Okay. <laughs> Architectural handwriting. Cool. So um, you can either use your finger or your pen if you want to just identify some important factors to us. Okay, great. So let me just start with the first house, which is right here, and that's typically ruled by Aries. I'll go through all the houses really quickly. Taurus rules the second house, Gemini the third, Cancer the fourth, Leo rules the fifth house, Virgo is the sixth, Libra is the seventh, Scorpio is the eighth, Sagittarius is the ninth, Capricorn is the tenth, Aquarius the eleventh, and Pisces the twelfth. And there is symbolism and information to go along with all of those but that's just a quick run through okay okay now what about these other symbols on the outside how do those relate or correlate so those are the ruling planets for each sign mm. um, there are characteristical things that go along with the first house mm -hmm. Aries and Mars right mm -hmm. so Mars is a planet of action mm -hmm. so is Aries so they both like to go quickly um, it's also fire so whenever you see the first house, Aries or Mars, you think about outward motion. Got you. Outward motion. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So right now, even though I did just come back up from the chart, what houses? Now, we were in the house of Scorpio. Is that how I would say that? Or the Scorpion house? Uh, the house of Scorpio. Well, the eighth house. The eighth house. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. The eighth house. Now, that's interesting because... It's the eighth house, but we're at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. So how does that correlate as far as our calendar days and the zodiac calendar? Or is it? It's, this is a chart, but it's not considered a calendar. Is it's it a not calendar? exactly the same. Well, we use the Gregorian calendar. Okay. Uh, okay. So the winter solstice 
is the onset of Capricorn, and mm -hmm. the spring equinox is the onset of Aries. Okay. And that's okay. in March. Solstice and equinox. It's, it's, I'm having a flashback from a physical science in grammar school that's or correct. something like that. <laughs> you know, so uh, solstice is when um, days get longer. No, no, uh, when they get sh shorter. So I'm actually kind of confused on this, but I think actually the shortest day of the year is the winter solstice, and they start to get longer from that because if mm -hmm. you notice, it is already really dark all the time. Okay, got you. So we haven't reached the winter solstice yet. No, that's really close to Christmas. It's usually around December 21st or December 22nd. Okay. And the fall equinox is when days start to get shorter, shorter, okay. shorter, shorter. So these the concepts of the solstice and the equinox these are these are very old ancient concepts right like man has been following the the stars and the um seasons for a long long time huh? you know much about that's that true. i know some i okay, feel like there is a lot to know it's plenty <laughs> plenty does this relate to the almanac at all or yes, is that something actually, it does farmer's almanac is a great resource to learn astrology okay is it is it pretty accurate it's very accurate. They base a lot of what they do on the moon cycle. So at a new moon, you plant seeds, and at a full moon, you would harvest. Wow. And the almanac has a lot more information. I've actually read an almanac to learn astrology based on, because it seems like grounded, right? Farming yes. puts things into the ground. It's not so up here in the heavens. Okay. Mm -hmm. So so even the almanac, that's like, that's pretty ancient too, right? Doesn't that go way back like to Egyptian times or something like that? Or do they update it? I don't really know. It's updated every year. Okay. <laughs> My bad. That's why I'm glad you're here to set me straight, you know what I mean? So I don't be passing out no bad information and fake news, you know, because it's important. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, I'm going to go back to your chart right here because I just find this fascinating. So, uh-huh. Okay, so to answer your question about the solstice and equinox, actually, I can do that a little bit here with the chart. So okay. um, the cardinal signs, Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn are all at the start of a season. So the winter solstice, the summer solstice, the um, spring and fall equinox is when we change seasons. Mm -hmm. And the signs are basically the season. So we have a cardinal sign, Aries, a fixed sign, Taurus, which holds the season. It's like we are officially in spring, we're in Taurus. And then Gemini is when the season is changing and those are called mutable. And from an astrological perspective, we say mutable signs keep the fixed and cardinal signs from killing each other because they both want their way. Mutable. Mutable. Changing. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. We have a caller. Oh, wow. We got a caller already, huh? Um, okay. Hey, caller. How would you, uh, thanks for calling the show uh, at Inglewood Enterprise Gallery. How can we help you? How do you use astrology in your day-to-day -day life? Wow, that's a heavy question right there. Interesting. How do you use astrology in your day-to-day -day life, Carly? So, I used to be obsessed with reading my horoscope every day. Not anymore. I think... That is such a heavy question. Um, a little bit to make my decisions. Like, not necessarily on an everyday basis, but on an overarching basis. Mm. Mm. I like to um I like to use it to pick lottery numbers myself. Oh, no, I'm good. just I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm just joking. I don't even play the lottery, so <laughs> I thought that might be funny. But um, you know, I think that uh sometimes it's like reading a newspaper, you know, or or having an idea of what the weather forecast might be for the day. So if you hear that there's a chance of rain because that's what the you know the weather forecaster said then you um, may be equipped with an umbrella or something like that sometimes um, you know based off of like like you discussed uh, my astrological chart and reading with me and I thought that there were some very um, interesting points that you made that I felt resonated with what was going on in my life at that time and it also helped me look at the bigger picture of things that were going on and what I could potentially expect more of that's good that's yes. helping me cater my answer 
Yes. I feel like looking at the bigger picture helps decide, you know, not decide, but to see where you fit in with all of it. Yes, yes, you know. And once again, um, <clears throat> some people do get uh, astrology and astronomy kind of intermingled, and they're two different things. Astronomy is telescopes and um, studying, uh, you know, studying of the stars and the science uh, and things like that. How would you describe astrology in contrast to astronomy? Let me start with astrology because I know that one better. Astrology yes. is, one description I like for it is folk medicine. So I'm going to not look at the charts. We're not doing that right now. Okay. But... <laughs> So I don't use astrology necessarily on a day-to-day -day basis, but I do like looking at a chart to see the bigger picture, right? Like how am I as a person and how are maybe the planets affecting me throughout mm -hmm. a larger scale of time? Yes. And how can I learn how to either go with that or fight against it if I dare? Um, astronomy, well, astrology is also the study more of the planets, whereas mm -hmm. astronomy is the study of the stars. Okay. Got you, got you. Interesting. Another point about how astrology um, may potentially play a part in anybody's life. Uh, what I found is throughout life, there are, and you know, some people might not agree, but there are certain characteristics that fall in line with certain people born around certain times. And I know that... Um, you know, I was, I'm born in November, my birthday was a couple weeks ago. You know, I'm in the house of the Scorpio, if I said that right. Oh, that's right, and, Scorpio. You know, and there, um, you know, there are a lot of, uh, we all humans, so a lot of humans uh, possess similar characteristics being born around similar times. Now, that doesn't mean that one is destined to be one way throughout life, but when you are able to look at the bigger picture, possibly through astrology and other things, you're able to see that, hey, maybe my personality makeup is not just about me, but maybe it's about a broader family uh, or a broader scope of people that um, are born under similar circumstance or possibly similar planetary alignments. Uh, and also, it allows for me or it helps me identify areas where I could potentially um, use some work so that I don't fall into this quote-unquote archetype that they say, hey, all Scorpios act like this, you know, or this and that. Because I found myself potentially falling into some of these, um, these characteristics, these um, stereotypical characteristics that, that people have identified with that partic uh, particular zodiac sign. But also, I found people who I work good with under certain signs. You know, or I found people who seem to gravitate into my life more often under certain signs. You know, now that doesn't mean that I'm not going to meet new people under different zodiac signs. But if I sit back and look at my life and all of the people that I've met that had um, certain types of impacts in my life, some of them do share some similar signs. Interestingly enough, you know, I really can't speak for everybody, but that's my own personal experience. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Also, <clears throat> before we get into this, because I got another heavy question for you, Carly, so bear with me. Um, I just want to remind everybody, let me put this back up here. Hey, we are the Inglewood Enterprise Gallery, uh, located at our new headquarter address at 1200 West 35th Street. Please check out our website at uh, inglewoodenterprisegallery.com. That's www Inglewood, um, Enterprise Gallery com and feel free to shoot us an email at enterprisegallery at gmail.com. That's enterprisegallery at gmail.com. Oh, and feel free to give us a phone call also. Um, this is a live show, so you can also give us a call at 312-738-1060, and we'll be on the lines right now for a few more minutes. So, Carly. Yeah. All right, so I got another interesting question. And if anybody has a question about anything else that we may be speaking about, feel free to call in, okay? But my question, scientists, is more of an astronomy question, but bear with me because I'd like to see what you think about it. Scientists say that there was an object that came into our solar system last year in 2017, all right? Now, when they first saw it, 
They said it was traveling so fast because usually they see objects before they come into our solar system because certain, certain objects are able to be mapped and they're able to check their orbit and things like that, like the planets. They know how the planets move and how they orbit and how the Earth rotates and these types of things. But this particular object, they say was traveling so fast, they didn't see it coming and it appeared in our solar system. In our solar system. Then they say this object actually made a turn and left the solar system at a faster rate. So, you know, there's a lot of debate going on. Some people probably don't even pay attention to that kind of news. But it happened last year in 2017. I'm going to actually pull up a picture right quick, which would be an artist's rendition of this particular object, right? Matter of fact, let me, let me show you this. Whoops. There we go. All right. This is an artist's rendition of this object. And they were trying to say that the object was an asteroid, but then they say, hey, we never seen a cigar-shaped asteroid. Then they say it could be a comet, but they've never seen a comet that was going in one direction change directions, right? So now, a year later, scientists are saying that, hey, maybe it wasn't an asteroid. Maybe it wasn't a comet. It actually could have been something that possibly was operated by some form of intelligent life. Possibly not human, right? Now, it came in and left our solar system, but I just wanted to see what you think about that. Do you think that there might be intelligent life out there in the heavens? I just want to state for the record that I had not heard of this before. Okay, okay. <laughs> I hate to drop that on you like no, that. No, it's cool. Uh, I definitely believe in life on other planets. And I feel like perhaps it could have been a UFO. I can't speak on that. Yes. But if it came in and then it left in its own opposite direction, we know that nothing in the heavens orbits. Like, things orbit, they move in ellipticals and set patterns that we can rely on. Yes. That is interesting. What do y'all think at home? 312-738-1060. Not to get too spooky, but hey, this was on the news. NASA was talking about it. It probably slipped under some of y'all radar. But hey, we need to be talking about these types of stellar phenomenon, as I will call them. I think we got a caller, too. Do we got a call on the line? Uh -huh. Call dropped. Call dropped. Okay, cool. No problem. Maybe they'll get back through, uh, you know... It'd be like that, <laughs> unless there's some stellar interference from one of them objects flying around out there. But anyway, so I just like to ask people what they think about that because um, we we don't really know. You know, there's so many unknown variables out here that are left up to theories and ideas of what they could actually be. So, uh, it's been so much heavy stuff going on, Carly. Um, what I would like to do, oh, excuse me, is um, you were talking about Mercury. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, we got a caller back. We on caller? Yeah, I sure am. Let me turn my TV down. Okay, no problem. Okay, so yeah, I heard about that, uh, that, that thing that flew through our solar system. And generally what happens is when any object uh, that's moving through the solar system or move, yeah, moving through around the sun approaches the sun at an angle like it does, it does a gravitational slingshot. And they use that in NASA all the time. They take, they spin a, 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 a rocket or a craft around Mars to slingshot it out to Jupiter or send it, you know, in, accelerate it out towards Uranus, that kind of thing. So that ship making that turn at the sun is probably a gravitational force. Um, just like whipped it out into the other part of the solar system. It, it was all, they also f saw that it wasn't just kind of, it wasn't sort of corkscrewing through the universe. It was tumbling, like end over end. Mm. So it wasn't like cruising through like the, you know, Star Starship Enterprise. It was <laughs> literally flipping end over end as it entered into the uh, the solar system. Funny thing about it, is that there was jets coming out of it, all different directions of like all sorts of uh, chemicals. And then uh, the, sh the, the weirdest part of it is that there were radio signals coming from it too. Amazing. Cool. I did not hear that in the news and you just enlightened me. Man, you spoke that like a true planetary scientist. Are you into uh, 
astronomy or anything like that? I, no, I'm just I'm just a geek. <laughs> <laughs> right, because the way you explained it, that sounds yeah. just like Neil deGrasse Tyson explained it on on one of those TV shows. I am not worthy. I am not worthy. <laughs> Listen, man, I love your show. I'm going to get on go with the rest of my night, but have a good uh, night. I appreciate you calling, bro. Thanks a bunch, and um, thanks for that information. Man, he just he just dropped some more heavy information on me. You know, um, he did say it was a spaceship. I just said did it was a... those words? Well, he did say spaceship. Did he? But, you know, I think he might have slipped and said spaceship. He might not have meant it. Because <laughs> we don't know. It's an unidentified flying object flying around out there. Is it a spaceship or is it not? It's cigar shaped, so they say. You know, but our time is almost up. And there's so much interesting stuff to talk about. Um, I wanted to ask you about Mercury and retrograde. I hear a lot of heavy, heavy uh, astrology people talking about this Mercury and retrograde thing. And what, what is that? And what, what would it mean? I hope I can explain it with um, the candor that that guy had. So, right. any planet that goes retrograde, and they all do, it's basically um, the way it appears from our perspective in the sky. So, the planet isn't actually going backwards. It looks like it's going backwards from our perspective here on Earth. Mm. And that, in Mercury's case, is because of how close it is to the Sun in its own orbit. And Mercury retrograde gets a really bad rap. And part of it is Mercury is the fastest moving planet that we have in our solar system because it's the closest one to the sun. It's constantly zipping around. Hmm. Uh, okay. So when he goes backwards, we tend to not pay as much attention. He rules the mind. Mercury is the mind, our communications. So when he's going backwards, technologies can kind of go haywire. Usually there's supposed to be a lesson in it. Um, remember is a part of Mercury retrograde that I like to point out, right? If you think of a part of yourself being reattached, mm. like we're bringing it back. Yes. So if snafus happen, it's usually so that you can slow down and pay attention to whatever it is that's actually going on in front of your face. That was eloquently spoken, Carly. I like that. Um, that's funny because my own personal experience with the Mercury retrogrades um, is that I got a buddy of mine and he usually gives me an update when Mercury is in retrograde. And what I found is like you say, this whole concept of remember, I find myself finding things that I hadn't seen in years. Like, oh, I didn't know that was there, or I was looking for this. Those types of moments. And then, usually, I'll misplace my phone during Mercury <laughs> and retrograde. So I don't know if that's a communication snafu, or, you know, or it's just, or, or my phone calls might drop a lot. But that just could be my faulty provider, you know, one of them government phones or something. <laughs> but, you know, it's, we got a whole list of stuff that we wanted to talk about, but there was one thing that jumped out at me, um, and we only got like a minute and a half, but before we get off the air, last time you were here, we only had two callers, right? That's true. All right, the lines were jam-packed with just two people, but those two people had the same birthday That's when they called. What is that? And we didn't even script it. What do you think about that, Carly? So... Well, it was January 27th. I feel like that's important information. So they were both Aquarius. Mm. And I could totally break down the symbolism of the numbers, but I won't do that. As an astrologer, I've come to believe that there is no such thing as coincidence. Yes. Right? Like all things, not to say like all of life is a setup, but if something happens where it seems coincidental, then that's a bell being rung by the universe to say, hey, pay attention. Yes. And so. That they are both Aquarius, we were talking a little bit before the show, I want to note, uh, so we are technically entering the age of Aquarius, which might take us a really long time. Um, in the 60s and 70s, they are all like, Age of Aquarius! Right, that was a popular song back yeah, in the days, right? Okay. going on about it. Um, and Aquarius is the sign of the future. Okay, okay, cool. So, um, now, now how long would that age last? A thousand years, or, or is it not that long? How long? 
Yeah, a couple thousand years. Yeah, it's, it's a while. You know, we'll be long gone before it's over with. But I got people banging on the door outside. They're about to run us up out of here. I hate to be rushing off, Carly. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure having you on the show. So much more to talk about. We're going to have to do this again. I'm glad y'all were able to join us. Remember, this is the Inglewood Enterprise Gallery Shy Rise Show. And as we always like to say, Shy Rise, not Shy Rack. Check us out on Facebook, Inglewood Enterprise Gallery, as well as www.inglewoodenterprise.com gallery.com. I'm your host, Brother Medina, with my co-host for today, the structure constructor, Carly. Y'all have a great day. Peace.